do something a little different today too. I'm going to start off singing a song. It's about my second favorite person in the Bible. Well, my favorite person in the Bible except for Jesus, of course. And you'll be able to see why. And uh, you can sing along with me right in your living room. Because <laughs> you know the song. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in that tree, and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm coming to your house today. For I'm coming to your house today. Now, when you get through rolling on the floor and laughing, you can get up now and we'll have, a, we'll have a little word of prayer here. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this time. Thank you that we could be together. Uh, we ask you, Lord, to bless us. We ask you to sustain us. We ask you, Lord, to protect us from the plague. We ask forgiveness of our sins. And we give you glory and honor and praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to be in chapter 19 of Luke. I'm standing up today because my hip is kind of hurting and I'm afraid I'll get froze up in the chair. <laughs> the curse of getting old, you know. Of course, the alternative, you know. Uh, anyway, in chapter 19 of Luke, it says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before, and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was good to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. You see, that's one of the three reasons that Jesus was born in the flesh. That's the reasons that he left heaven, he left the glory of heaven, and he he came down to earth and was born of a virgin. He came for three reasons. He came for one thing, to reveal the invisible God. The second reason he came was to destroy the works of the devil. And the third reason he came is, was to seek and to save that which was lost. And that was me. And, uh, and, and that was you too before you got saved. And if you don't know him now, that's you right now. And he's calling you. Jesus is seeking you right now. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Now, Zacchaeus, he was a publican. And he, he was the chief of the publicans. Not the Republicans. No, it wasn't the Republicans. It was the, he was a publican. Which he, he was a tax collector. That's what he did. And so the people of Judea, they hated the tax collectors because... They collected for the Romans. They collected the taxes. And it was a it was a racket. It was a confidence game. It was a scheme. Uh, because so many of these publicans, they were they were crooked. And what they would do is they would exact more from the people than than than, than they had a right to get. What they would do is that they would get, say, if, if they owed uh, if they owed uh, ten shekels to the Romans. Well, the, the publicans, they had, you know, they'd collect 12 or 15 because they'd only have to pay the 10 shekels to the Romans. They'd keep the rest for themselves. So they would overcharge people on their taxes, give the Romans what was on their roll that they had to give, and then uh, 
they would keep the rest for themselves. So there was just a lot of room for a lot of room for corruption there, and many of them were corrupt, and that's why the publicans were so hated. Zacchaeus was hated for another reason, because he was sharp. Oh, you know, they, they wrote that song about Zacchaeus. Uh, Randy Newman, you know, short people got no reason to live. Well, that's probably not in the Bible. But 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 Zacchaeus, you know, he was, he was just a little guy. But uh, I'm sure that every time that he went around collecting taxes, I'm sure he had some big guys with him because they would probably beat up whoever couldn't pay or take what they had. And that's how it worked. It was just like it. It was just like the mob coming around and shaking you down for protection money. It was a racket, and that's what they did. And uh, but he was interested in Jesus. He had heard that Jesus was coming. He had heard about the miracles that Jesus was doing, and he wanted to make sure that he got to see Jesus. And so he climbed up in the sycamore tree so he could see him walking by. I know how that feels. I've been short all my life. I never get to see anything. I always have to stand on something. If my wife want, is mad at me and wants to get at me, she'll put stuff up where I can't reach it. I'll know she's mad at me if I have to climb up on a step stool to, to reach stuff that I use every day because she's put it up where I can't find it. Not really, baby. I'm just, I'm just bragging on you here on the, <clears throat> on the recording. But anyway, um, it, it reminds me of a time when I was, I was five years old and uh, the movie The Alamo premiered in Houston. Well, it had premiered a couple of days earlier in San Antonio, but then it had a Houston premiere, and John Wayne was there, and Gramps, my grandfather, took me to see it uh, downtown. It was at the Tower Theater, which I think it, I think it was on was that on Westheimer? I can't remember, but it was a uh, it was uh, the Tower Theater in Houston, and that's where the Alamo premiered in Houston. It had premiered at the Majestic in San Antonio a couple of days before. I was five years old. I was fascinated with Alamo. I'd already been to the Alamo and uh, the real Alamo in San Antonio. So I want to see this movie, but I want to see John Wayne. So we're standing out there, and uh, and uh, Gramps put me up on his shoulder so I could look over the crowd. And then and here come John Wayne walking down the walking down the the pathway there, you know, on the sidewalk. Got out of a limousine and come in, was waving at everybody. It was pretty cool, you know, but I wouldn't have seen John Wayne if I hadn't had been up on Gramps' shoulders. I couldn't have seen anything. Uh, so I certainly understand Zacchaeus. He wanted to see. And I think the reason he wanted to see is twofold. There was a lot of excitement about Jesus. See, there was a big crowd following him. You know, the crowd is following him, and he, and, and uh, but, but he had, uh, Zacchaeus had heard about all the miracles that Jesus had done. And so there were two things going on. He wanted to see Jesus because of the crowd and because of the show and because of the miracles. But we're going to see here in a minute that Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus because he, Zacchaeus knew that he was a sinner. He knew that he had been doing some things wrong and that he wasn't right with God. And if Jesus was who he said he is, and if Jesus did those miracles that only the Messiah could do, that only the anointed one of Israel could do. Only the king of Israel, the son of David, though he's the only one that could do these things, was predicted throughout the Old Testament. Well, then Zacchaeus knew he needed to see Jesus. See, that happens to all of us. We hear about Jesus. We hear about Jesus. Why do you think you, you go to church hundreds of times before all of a sudden it clicks and you come and you, you weep before the cross and you, you, you beg him to save you? You see, it's not just enough to know who he is. It's not just enough to know what he says. You've got to feel the weight, the burden of your own sin right here. And when you feel that, he'll save you. But until you feel that, you're not even admitting that you need to get saved. Zacchaeus, Jesus sees him up there in that tree. He says, Zacchaeus, you come down here. I'm going to go to your house. And boy, he was like, whew! I bet he felt tall then. He came down out of that tree. And boy, he was, Jesus is coming to my house. And they walk in there, and the crowd is going, oh, man. You know, they were always mad at Jesus because he Jesus hung around with sinners all the time. You know, 
Jesus said in one place, he said, the main complaint about me, he says, it says that John the Baptist said, said he came uh, neither eating or drinking, and you said he had a devil. He said, I come eating and drinking, and you say that I'm a glutton and a wine bibber and a friend of si a friend of sinners. Well, Jesus was a friend of sinners. I'm telling you, he was a friend of sinners because uh, he did not want them to go to a devil's hell. He wanted them to come to him and let him give them rest. He said, come unto me, all ye who, who let, who, <coughs> All ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So they go to Zacchaeus' house, and the people are murmuring about it. They say, he's going to be the guest with a man that's a sinner. And Zacchaeus stands up, and apparently they've, they've been having some kind of meal because they're just walking in there, and the only way he could stand up would be if they're sitting down. And uh, if Jesus had come to his house, I'm sure that he had his servants come and wash Jesus' feet and have him sit down and have meat and bread brought before them so they could have a meal. And, and Jesus has probably been talking to him all this time while the crowd's standing around the door and looking in the windows and everything. What are they doing in there? What's Jesus doing in there with that? That publican! Now remember, he wasn't a Republican. He was just a publican. <laughs> a tax collector. What's Jesus doing in there with that sinner? And they're looking in the windows and looking inside the door, trying to listen to what's going on. And I'll tell you what they talked about. They were talking about the kind of life that Zacchaeus was living. And they were talking about what Zacchaeus needed to do to make it right. And we know they had that discussion because while the people are saying, that guy, Zacchaeus, is a sinner. And bad mouthing Jesus for going into his house. Zacchaeus stands up and he says, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. You know, what did Jesus say to the young ruler who asked, it, What shall I do that I may have eternal life? Jesus said, Well, thou knowest the law. Honor your father and mother. Do not commit adultery. And he names all three or four of them. And the young ruler says, Well, those have I kept since my youth. And Jesus said, Well, thou lackest one thing, so sell all that thou hast and come and follow me. He probably says something like this to Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus says, Yeah, he said, You know, I got plenty. I'm plenty rich. He was the chief among the publicans. He was the high gyrastacutus. He was the big deal, the big cheese of all the publicans. So he was making more money than any of them. And he says, I'm going to give half of everything I have to the poor. Now, would an unsaved man say that? I don't think so. Especially when he's sitting right there with the Savior. And then he says something even bigger. And he says, if I've taken anything by false accusation, in other words, if I've taken anything that I don't have a right to take, I'll restore it to them fourfold. And that goes back to the Old Testament. You know, if you took something from somebody, like a lamb or a, a cow or a piece of money or anything, if you took something from somebody and you got caught, you had to restore them fourfold. You had to you had to repay and make restitution four times the amount you took. So here is a guy who was a sinner who sits down with the Savior and then all of a sudden he becomes a great humanitarian. <laughs> and he's ready to do social work. He's he, he going to give half everything he has to the poor and then if he's, he's wronged anybody and what he's doing is he, He's talking to these people that are outside, too, the people that are listening at the windows and at the door. And he says, if I owe anybody anything, I'll pay you back four times. You just, uh, you make an appointment with my secretary here, and, and I'll, I'll pay you off. You just let me know if I owe you anything, and I'll pay it. Give me a bill. Now, that heart is right before God. You know? And Jesus turns around and he says to him, he said, look, today salvation has come to your house. You're a son of Abraham too. You know, because see, he came to the house of Israel. Now, John, the first chapter, he says, he says, he came to his own and his own received him not. Jesus is the son of David. He is the descendant of Abraham. He's the king of Israel. 
They rejected their king, but he's coming back. And he is going to reign with a rod of iron from Jerusalem. That's going to happen. But right there, right there he says, salvation's come to your house. And it came in two ways. It came because Jesus literally is salvation. Because I'm saved because Jesus saves. That's the only way that I get saved is because he does save and he saves me. So he is salvation. One of his names is the salvation of Israel. He's the consolation and the salvation of Israel. But the other deal is that uh, he not only is salvation, is he brought salvation with him and he gave it. He gave it to Zacchaeus, the wee little man. Because Zacchaeus' heart got right that day. He believed Jesus. And he turned around and he, he did right. And see, that was the Old Testament law. The scripture says that if you're wicked, if you'll forsake your wicked way and do what's right, then I won't remember your sin anymore. That's how it worked under the law. And this was before the cross. They were still under the law, even though the Savior... The one who gave the law, he's sitting right there with him. And the whole deal is that Jesus says that the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Well, Zacchaeus was lost and now he was saved. Jesus sought him out. Zacchaeus was up there in that tree. Jesus said, hey, Zacchaeus, you come down. I'm going to your house. I sought you and I saved you. He sought me and he saved me. I wasn't looking for him. He was looking for me. I wasn't calling him. He was calling me. And if you belong to him, he sought you and saved you too. Now, if you don't know the Lord, you can't. You just have to believe that. You have to believe that he's the son of God. You have to believe that he was born of a virgin. You have to believe that he died on an old rugged cross and that he bought your way out of hell with his precious blood. That he died, they took him down dead, they buried him in a tomb. On the third day he walked out of that tomb under his own power. He's alive then, he's alive now, he's alive forevermore and he can and will save you if you ask him to. And I always say the best news of the good news is that he's never turned anybody down. He didn't turn down Zacchaeus. He didn't turn me down. He won't turn you down. Trust him today. Let salvation come to your house. And if it's already come, then live like it has. God bless you. I love you. See you next time.